What makes a strategy successful? Is it vision and foresight, resources and experience, ability to execute, product and service quality, or market timing? All of these things contribute to a successful strategy, but the underlying cause is more fundamental. Successful strategy occurs from an alignment among three life cycles. They're the product, market, and execution life cycle. If one or more of these life cycles is misaligned, you have a high probability of failure. If all three are aligned, you have high prospects for success. A life cycle is a system's course of evolution. Every system is born, grows, ages, and eventually dies. Understanding the product, market, and execution life cycle is the key to building your strategy. Your product is the goods and services you make available for sale. Every product goes through a life cycle that is a trade-off between product development and product stability. The basic stages of the product life cycle are pilot it, nail it, scale it, milk it, or at any time, kill it. Each stage of the product life cycle requires a set of key actions. In the piloted stage, you're asking a lot of questions and testing your assumptions. Your key actions are to innovate a product that has the potential to disrupt the status quo. You accomplish this by understanding the real dynamics within a market niche. You create solutions that solve a market problem in a new and better way. In order to do this, you must show thought leadership within your space and have early stage customers who are champions for your approach. In the nail it stage, you focus the product to solve the core customer problem and sacrifice what's not essential. You must collaborate very closely with customer product champions to prove and document that you solve their pain. The outcome at this stage is that you've built trust and credibility and you have paying customers who come back and buy more. In the scale it stage, your key actions are to standardize the product. You're in a race now to be a niche market leader. At this stage, you create high value add-on products and services. You increase your margin by leveraging customers' willingness to pay. And because you've proven that you solved their problem at the prior stage, they will be willing to pay, along with greater internal efficiencies that come from standardizing the product. In the milk it phase, your key actions are to maintain the product. You limit additional investment to immediate ROI. At this stage, you either milk it or sell it. Seek to leverage your past thought leadership, proven capabilities, and standardization to defend and expand your relative market share. Every market goes through a life cycle that's a trade-off between market development and market stability. The basic stages of the market life cycle begins with innovators. This is the group that drives change within their industry. The next group is early adopters. This group is open to new ideas and they're willing to try new products, but in a more careful way than the innovators. The early majority segment is known as practical buyers. They're thoughtful and cautious, but still adopt new products faster than the norm. Finally is the late majority laggards, who are resistant to new products until they have become the industry norm. In order to align the product market life cycle, you must ensure that you are piloting your product to innovators, nailing it for early adopters, scaling it for the early majority, and milking it for the late majority laggards. Here are some key indicators that will tell you if your product and market life cycle are well aligned. The key indicators are market growth rate, competition, pricing pressure, and net cash flow. When you're piloting your product for innovators, first you'll notice you're in negative cash flow. Your market growth rate should be low because you're still defining the problem and the solution for the market. Therefore, the competitors should be few too. Consequently, the pricing pressure will be high because you haven't defined the problem or the solution. You have no ability to charge enough money for it at this stage. As you're demonstrating thought leadership and winning the customer champion, you find the right opportunity and nail it for early adopters. And notice that you're still in negative cash flow, but the market growth rate should begin to increase, hopefully because of your own efforts. The competitors should still be few, but because you're proving that you're solving the customer problem, the pricing pressure is less and you're able to charge more for your product. As you've nailed the product here, you leap across the chasm and you begin to scale the product for the early majority by standardizing it. The market growth rate is high and increasing, and so are the numbers of competitors. If you've done the sequence right, you've established thought leadership at the piloted phase. You've proven that you've solved the problem at the nail it phase. You've standardized the product and begin to add new high value extensions in the scale it phase. Because you've done those things, you should be in a leadership position and the pricing pressure, even though there's lots of competition, should still be low. You know you're at the final stage of the life cycle when you're milking the product for the late majority or laggard clients. Here the market growth rate is slowed, there is still a lot of competition and the pricing pressure is high. 
Despite these challenges, you're still able to generate positive cash flow if you're in a secure position. Strategic success follows a path to prosperity and it goes like this. Pilot your product for innovators, nail it for early adopters, scale it for the early majority, and you'll avoid the commodity trap for as long as possible. By doing that, you've created maximum building of market awareness. You've made smart, timely investments relative to your product and market life cycles, and you've maintained pricing and margins to avoid the commodity trap for as long as possible. That's the path to prosperity. There are also three classic strategic follies. Follies occur when you don't follow the path to prosperity and you try to cheat your way across it. The first folly is called the face plant. That's when you're innovating a product into a commodity market and you're spending resources to solve a problem that the market views as already having been solved. You haven't established thought leadership in stage one. You don't nail the product and prove that you solved the problem in phase two. You don't understand the customer spending priorities and you never establish margins and leadership. So you come into this market against better finance, more robust solutions, and you get crushed by those vendors with a more complete service offering. The next strategic folly is called the flame out, and this happens in two instances. The first is with a company that is piloting a product, and because it needs money, it immediately tries to aggressively ramp up sales without having first proven the product. Because they never establish thought leadership and prove they solve the customer problem, they might get early traction, but it doesn't turn into long-term success. They will also end up competing against others who do prove that they solve the problem and thus become a leader and enjoy greater success. The other scenario occurs when the company believes that they've nailed it, but haven't. And in the race to get a return on investment, they launch quickly into scale mode with a full feature set, every feature and function under the sun, without understanding what the customer's pain point is or their spending priorities. So they launch in a big way and cause a lot of noise, but the market is not ready or the features aren't aligned. Essentially, they're presupposing demand and the demand isn't there, so the company flames out. The third strategic folly is called the lost opportunity. In this stage, a company pilots it for innovators and nails it for early adopters, but they're too late. Some other company has already established itself as the leader, and so they try to compete immediately on price and launch a product into the market as if it were a commodity. But because they've never standardized their product and established market leadership, the product doesn't have the brand awareness and margins to be successful. It just dies on the vine. The third life cycle is the execution life cycle. The execution life cycle is a dynamic between company stability and company development. As a leader, you're trying to get your company up through the life cycle, from birth to early growth, growth and maturity, and from here, launch new business units, products and services that go through their own product, market, and execution life cycles. There are two basic traps here. The first trap is when a new, highly entrepreneurial company that's in an early growth phase with their first core product attempts to launch new products and services too early in their life cycle before they have the stability and maturity to do it effectively. The other trap occurs when an aging company who has a large cash hoard attempts to acquire a smaller growth-oriented business. But the acquiring company is so aged, heavy, and stable, they smother the entrepreneurial zeal and don't allow these new life cycles to launch properly. So successful strategy comes from the alignment among the product, market, and execution life cycles. If all three are aligned, you have a high probability of success. If one or more are misaligned, if you try to shortcut the life cycle, you have a high chance of failure. Finally, this model presupposes that there are three basic requirements for any strategy. First, the strategy has to be aligned with the company vision and values. Second, the company must have or be able to get the resources, including staff, technology, customers, and capital to execute the strategy. Third, the company must have the core competence and experience to execute. So the key strategic question should be, where are you now? And what should your next move be?